Greetings and welcome to our first video on solving algebraic equations. Now this is a really exciting chapter because we're building on what we did in chapter 7 with algebraic expressions and we're moving into equations. So this is going to be something that comes up pretty much for the rest of your life as a mathematician. You will be dealing with equations in some sort. Uh, even when you get into physics and chemistry, there's just going to be a lot of times where you use this. So as we get started, I do want to review a couple key things that are going to be foundational for the, our work with equations. And that is just a reminder that a variable is a letter that represents an unknown quantity. So we talked about this in chapter 7 where if you have, like if Mr. Plaska has X dollars and somebody else, let's say Wrigley, has three times as much money as Mr. Plaska, then Wrigley has three X dollars. And so we don't know how much money I have here, but we are able to write an expression that gives us the value for Wrigley. So now though, that was when we were dealing with an expression. So we just had our variable, we may have had other terms in there, but now we're moving into an equation. And so we can say like in this situation, Mr. Plaska has X dollars, Wrigley has three times as much money as Mr. Plaska, and Wrigley has $27. Now that we know how much money Wrigley has, we're able to figure out the value of X, or we're able to figure out the amount of money that Mr. Plaska has. So in the past when we've said, how do we know how much money Mr. Plaska has, we could say, yes, we know it's X, but we don't know the actual value. Now that we're dealing with equations, we can actually figure out that value. And this is where the equals sign and reviewing that equals means is the same as or equivalent to or is. And it's just meaning that whatever is on one side of the equal sign has the same value as what's on the other side. And that's a really important concept to keep in mind. That when we're looking at this, think of it like a seesaw or a scale or balance where we have this and it's pivoting in the middle and whatever is on one side, our 3x is equal to that 27. Those represent the same amount. It's not tilted. There's not one that's greater than the other. In fact, they are equal. And in this video and in this chapter, we're going to be looking at how do we determine that unknown value now that we know this. And then one, another way that you could think about this is you know that Mr. Plaska has like three packages, one, two, three, and they contain X amount of dollars, but we don't know how much is in each one. We do know though that Mr. Plaska has $27. Since we know that these three packages are also the same value as 27, I guess you could look at it using our bar models. We have three groups and they total 27 we would be able to figure out the amount of that group there. That would be x. So these are connected to what we're doing or how we've studied other uh, concepts, but it's going to be a, kind of a nice way to apply that old knowledge. As we're going through this, we will be talking about a couple other terms that I don't have written down here. Things like isolate the variable. And to isolate the variable means that is basically what you're doing when you're solving algebraic equations. You are trying to get that variable all by itself. So that way you know what the value is. As we're trying to determine or solve algebraic equations, we are trying to uncover that unknown quantity. And the only way to figure out that unknown quantity is to figure out the value of one. So solving algebraic equations is finding the value of one of the variable. Yeah, so we'll be isolating the variable and then there's this other idea of inverse operations. So that's what this picture is here, where if we have a variable and some operation has been done to it, we can undo what has been done using the inverse operation. And we'll get into this, but this should be a, um, a familiar idea because we know addition and subtraction are related. We know multiplication and division are also related. And so leveraging that knowledge from third, fourth, and fifth grade, we will be able to apply it in a new context here in sixth grade. So our first example is nine equals x plus six. 
or 9 is the same as x plus 6. And in this, we are going to be solving for x. We want to know what is the value of x. And there's only going to be one possible solution in these problems or in these equations that makes it true. So we couldn't throw, if we were just going to guess and check, we couldn't put like a, a 1 in there. We could not say x equals 1 because if we substitute and then solve, if I plug in that value of 1 there, we know x, if we're guessing, was 1. Is 9 equal to 7? And the answer is no, it's not. So we know that x does not equal 1. And you could guess and check and go through this, but guessing and checking is not going to be the most efficient strategy. You would have to try a whole bunch of numbers. So I'm going to put an x through that now. And we are going to look at how can we use mathematics to solve this. And I'm going to start out with this balance because this picture is a great way to visualize what's happening. On one side, here is our x plus 6 because we have x here and then we have 6 of these 1s. And that is equal to or in balance or the same as 9. And I, in class, we also looked at how, well, if this is a bar model and we have a part that is x and a part that is 6, and our total is 9, we could figure out the value of x. And to do that, if we're looking at the picture, I just want to find the value of x. I only want to know the value of this one box here. So to get just the value of that box there, I'm going to cross out. I need to get rid of these 6 in order to make x by itself. I need to isolate x by removing those extras. Now. Since these are equal, and they have to have the same value on both sides, otherwise our balance tips out of, out of balance, we also need to subtract 6 from the other side. So we've removed the same amount from both sides, and our balance is still, or our seesaw is still balanced perfectly. And what is left now is we are left with x on one side, and that is the same as those three on the other side. So according to this picture, x is equal to 3. And if we looked at our bar model down below here, we know that if we plug 3 or if we substitute 3 for x, that would be true. Or using our other skills from before, we know that 9 minus 6 is 3. And that's how we would figure out a part, part, whole problem. This is great on simple ones, but we need to apply these patterns and these ways of thinking to new, uh, we need to learn a different way to record this work. So if we have 9 equals x plus 6, on our seesaw, our balance, when we were solving, the first thing we did was we subtracted 6 from both sides. So I'm going to record that minus 6 underneath those 6 that were added onto it. Because this side here means 6 more than x is the same as 9. And so we don't want to know what is 6 more than x. We just want to know what x is. So if we remove those 6 on this side, we are only left with x. And to keep our balance even, we also had to subtract 6 from the other side. So now we know that 3 is equal to x. So here we've done the same work. We have isolated our variable. The variable is by itself. And the first thing we did was we removed those 6 from one side and from the other side. We removed them here, and we removed them here. And then we were just left with our 1x equaling 3. The beauty of solving algebraic equations is that there is a built-in way for you to check to see, did I do this right? And we check using substitution. So when you check using substitution, you start with your original expression, 9 equals x plus 6, and you substitute the value that you got. We're going to substitute and solve and see when x equals 3 is our equation true. So we'll rewrite with our value in there for x. And now we have 9, maybe, 9 equals 9. And so that checks out. I know that my answer is correct because 9 does, in fact, equal 9. 
So a addition is easy to show on the scale because you have extras added in, but we're going to be looking at subtraction, which is a little bit different. And so we'll just be trying to apply this way of recording our work from over here on the right side. So as we solve this, I know this means that 3 less than x equals 10, or is 10. But to solve for x, we don't want to know 3 less than x. We want to know what is actually x. So if we have 3 less than x equals 10, that means to find the actual value of x, I need to add 3 to it. Because 3 minus x plus 3, if we think about this like order of operations, and we were to combine like terms, if we subtract 3 and then add 3, that would be like x plus 0, or just x. So we are left with x equals, and now we've added 3 to one side. So right now our scale is tipped in this side because we've added an additional 3 to that side. But to balance it back out, we need to add another 3 to the other side. So that way we remain equivalent on both sides. 10 plus 3 is 13. So according to our work, if we want to check using substitution, starting with x minus 3 equals 10, we can substitute this 13 for that x and then check. So 13 minus 3 is 10, and 10 does equal 10. So we know that this is in fact true because 3 less than x, if x is 13, 3 less than 13 is 10. The same thing applies when you're dealing with multiplication. And if you look up here, this picture starts to make more sense. And when we had a variable plus a constant, to undo it, we needed to subtract that constant. When we had a variable sub minus a constant, to undo it, we had to add to it. So multiplication and division are related in the same way. If you have multiplication, to undo that multiplication, you need to divide. And so first we'll look through this with the picture here, where we have three c's, so that's a c, a c, a c, are equal to nine. But we don't want to know the value of three of those c's, we want to know the value of one of those c's. And so if we were to figure out the value of one of those, we would need to divide that into three groups, one, two, three. And so we should also divide our other side of our equation into three groups as well, three equal sized groups. So there's one, two, three. And so you can see from this picture then that according to this, one c is equivalent to three. And I'm gonna show this with a bar model as well. If here is this, that's a c, a c, and a c, and that total is 9, we know that these three c's, to figure out the value of one of them, we are going to have to do 9 divided by 3, and we get 3. So mathematically, if we are going to record this using algebraic thinking, we need to divide both sides by 3, because right now we have 3 times c, is 9, but we don't want to know 3 times c, we only want to know 1 times c. So to undo multiplying by 3, we need to divide by 3. And when we divide using algebra, we don't write like this, because that's, that's not going to get us there. Instead, we know division, we turn it into a fraction. And so we would write it like this, because divided by 3 is the same as turning into a fraction over 3. Now, 3 over 3 is equivalent to 1, so we're just left with 1c equals, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So c equals 3. If you notice, that's the answer we got here, here, and there, but I still am going to do my check. So when I check with substitution, 3c equals 9. I'm going to substitute 3, and then I'm going to simplify and check. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 does equal 9. I must have gotten that one. So we know that if we have a coefficient, a whole coefficient there, we're doing multiplication, we need to divide to undo it. The same thing is going to be true when we have division. So this means here, 1 fourth, or m divided by 4 is 10. We don't want to know m divided by 4, we just want to know m. 
So to undo dividing by 4, we need to multiply both sides by 4. So this looks like simplify before multiply. 4 divided by 4, those will simplify down to 1 and 1. m times 1 is m. And we're left with m equals 4 times 10, which is 40. m equals 40. Hmm. That was pretty great. And we could think of it like this, just to check our bar model. If this whole thing is m, and we've divided it into four parts, and here right there, this is 1 fourth m is equal to 10, well, that must mean that each one of these is equal to 10, and our total is 4 times 10, or 40. And we can check ourselves again. So when we check 10 equals m over 4, let's substitute 10 equals 40 divided by 4. 10 equals, well, 40 divided by 4 is 10. So our answer checks. We are good to go. The key for this, there are two big keys, is remember inverse operations, and then make sure whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other side.